Okay, great. Hi, everyone. Um, thank you so much to Aaron Kent and Charlie Bayless for making my lockdown a lot more exciting by agreeing to publish this. It was the best news ever. Um, so New Year's Eve, so pretty, isn't it? Um, and yeah, thank you all for coming as well. I know you have a lot better things to be doing, but you're here. Um, this is Crab Snow Globe. Thrown in with shoelaces and paracetamol. A souvenir from Copson Street Pound Shop. This rusty orange crab on a rock with specks of glitter resting in every nook and cranny. Around the base, there are footprints in sand and another smaller crab, exactly alike, except I can touch it. Inside your hard glass globe, you seem to be in some other dimension, like the reflection in a mirror or memory. Either dormant or ecstatic, when I shake you up, it is for a moment New Year's Eve, your pincers grasping to catch the confetti that floats around your head in kaleidoscope slow motion. Then, when each piece has fallen, you wait for something else to happen. So the pamphlet is called New Year's Eve and I do mention it quite often because it's just one of the best days of the year, maybe the best day of the year. Um, cause not just because of the parties, but because it's like a milestone in your life that you can kind of look back at every New Year's Eve. And it's always good, it's always good. Um, and so the next one I'm going to read is Forrest Gump, which is, as you know, a great movie. Um, so yeah. I remember my mum asking me if I'd made him watch Forrest Gump yet about some boyfriend. And it's true, it never gets old. I don't even remember the first time I watched it. I think it was at Ellie's house. She had a huge DVD collection and told me how they used old footage, adding in Tom Hanks to make it seem real. And I thought, that's so clever. But Ellie is clever. And it never gets old. Every time I watch it, I'm connected to all the others watching it and crying, if not all the way through, at least at the end, when he talks to Jenny's grave. This time, it was before she'd even offered him a seat on the bus. I know it's cheesy, but I think there's something in it, that way of love apart. You're not with the person you love, but you think of them whenever you see something nice or sad, and they're thinking of you too, even though you never really know if they actually are, until one day they tell you, when you're on your deathbed, you were with me. It never gets old, and I never get old. I just keep starting again from scratch, from square one from good morning, from happy new year. Happy new year, everyone. Um, so another thing I talk about a lot is my mum, which is quite embarrassing. But if you knew my mum, she's um, quite a force of nature. So she talks a lot, and this is an example of that. It's called vegetarian. All men are pigs, even the best of them was a joke or warning my mom gave to me. And her mom gave the same to her, she said, and her mom gave the same to her. I snorted and left to go and see the new Macbeth. Tears the size of babies' heads rolled down the cheeks of actors, men and women born of men and women. I looked around, the cinema was full. I squeezed through crowds of bodies, then I went and wolfed a sweating bacon roll. Some food for thought there. <laughs> um, so yeah, another thing I like to see poems about all the time is friends, because friends are important and they give you advice and they you have kind of mundane conversations that you don't realize are going to be important to you. And I often 
am really inspired by really mundane things my friends say to me. Um, I'm going to do a poem called Tornadoes, which is about a person I met when I was traveling and made friends with. And yeah, that's it really. So Tornadoes. In an air conditioned bus, you told me about your mom and your cat called something that means something in Korean and said you would know when you found the person you want to marry. I said I wouldn't, would always think there was someone better, but you said you would, and it sounded final, so I left it there and fell asleep. You said I missed a good view of cactuses. In a winding collectivo, you told me about your pickup truck and all the tornadoes back home. It felt strange not to hear a loud voice in the background wherever I went. And when I saw a Scotia bank, I looked away. On Dia de los Muertos, I thought of you and all your brothers and sisters and your dad, who all left Kansas. In an air conditioned bus, I sat next to a stranger and saw the view you'd seen while I had slept. I'm gonna take a drink. Everyone else take a drink, cheers. Right. Next poem I'm going to do is called Giant. And it's like, it looks cool. Don't know if you can see it, but it goes downwards, sideways, edgy. Um, and it's about, uh, it's after a painting by Leonora Carrington, which Will recommended me about, um, a painting called the giantess and the egg or something, but I took the egg out because Will doesn't like eggs. So it's just the giant. Friends stop growing, stop catching your eye or the giggles. Size 12 boots burst at the toes. You start to get the picture. Catch your ankle swingers in the mirror. Frizzy mane tinted by rain. Eyes that seemed huge in childhood rendered foreign plug sockets. You are growing up away from grass and greens, trees like little puffs of smoke to stub your toes on. Bony birds look uglier up close, use you for shelter. Parents tell you to be patient, tie long plaits down your back to anchor you, have no idea you can see further than their short-sighted aphorisms. In April, you can smell the winter snow. Your toes tucked into earth can feel toilets spinning backwards in New Zealand. You hear the clouds sneeze. I've already designed your own plaque for the Natural History Museum. Chosen a place next to the bones of the big blue whale. You know you are lucky, really. Never had bed bugs. Lulled to sleep by swinging cranes. Only kept awake by stars and planes. And the last poem I'm going to do from the pamphlet um, I'm going to do one more and then I'm going to read uh, a newer thing that I've been working on just to, because otherwise you will heard them all and you won't need to buy it, which you should do. Um, I'm going to do one to dedicate to the people watching in Catalonia, because I know there's a few people there. And um, yeah, so especially Laia, who's, who was my old au pair when I was a child and was a big inspiration to me. She's a very good poet and translator. Um, so this poem is set in Barcelona and it mentions the Castellers, which if anyone doesn't know what it is, it's like a big human pyramid type thing. And it's called Enchaneta, which is the name for the little girl. There's this like little girl who's like six years old or something. And she has to climb all the way to the top because she's the lightest. And she sticks her hand up like that when she gets to the top. So it's about her. In Barcelona, it is 38 degrees and a little girl screams with mimicked joy. She has all eyelashes, all eyes, all teeth and gums and tongue. I hate her through the eyes of her big sister. Half a plastic broken heart tied around my neck. I climb a fence to watch the castellers. They huddle, arms up, 
as if reaching for a throat. Others climb them like stairs, feet clinging to backs, like tadpoles on their first legs. It doesn't stop, more like ants than people, but with muscle and bone and white trousers. Two little girls heading for the top. One takes her place below, the other is no longer a child, but the star at the top of a Christmas tree. Her arm pointing up is the man on the moon, a clock striking midnight on New Year's Eve. She slides down the legs of her supporters, relieving the mountains of tension from their shoulders. So, now I'm gonna read something a bit new and see if you like it. Um, I'm writing, I, I've been going to RG's Poetry Jam on a Thursday, which is really great. Shout out to anyone from RG's Poetry Jam because we have a good time. And I learned a, an, a new form recently called a duplex, um, invented by Jericho Brown, and it's really changed my life. <laughs> um, so I've written a couple, I'm writing a sequence of poems, but I'm just going to read two of them um, now, and then I'll pass on to the next person. But thank you for listening, everyone. So Frank is a, is a kind of title for this. I need to find Frank and ask him why. I'm not here because of love or even sex. Because I'm here, I can't be there. Where was the last place you saw him then? A magician soaring volunteers in half. He disappeared as soon as I woke up. I woke up and looked him in the eye. I didn't have the words to ask him then. Now words appear like hedgehogs in a hat. I learned to speak like everybody else. I learned to steal like everybody else. When was the last time he found a piece of me on his clothes, in a book, on his phone? I need to find Frank and ask him why. The books I read are full of words. I read the words as if they are from him. His only words to me will come and go. In the library, I can come and go. In the library, doors open and close. People watch me alphabetically, but don't bother me with sticks and stones. I run my finger along their spines. I run my finger along their eyes. H is where I found my sense of humor. I read a book called Happiness. In the beginning, there was a dictionary. In the beginning, there was an A. The books I read are full of words. <laughs>